All right, let's go through, again, solving for sample size, which we addressed in our last homework assignment. Um, but there's also going to be a solving for the confidence level problem in here. So we'll quickly go through these first ones. Um, so, of course, we know that our margin of error comes from two things, that confidence level and then our standard error of statistic, which we have control over the sample size and the confidence level. Those are the two things that we can control to uh, change our um, margin of error. So we also know that as n goes up, as n goes up, this makes our standard deviation smaller to make a smaller sample size. So here is a couple of problems. This first one is like what we saw on our assignment uh, for assignment two. We are asked to have a margin of error of 0.04 with 98% confidence. So I came over here and I kind of wrote out the facts that I know. The margin of error is 0.04. That critical value for 98% confidence is that 2.33. The p hat they told me based on past results indicates 0.6. So here is the key that you have to know to do is to fill in this formula, margin of error equals that critical value times that standard deviation of the statistic. All right, once you get this written down, if you want to just keep the rest of it in your calculator and then write down, I would write down this unrounded number and then put your rounded number, then that's fine. You do not have to show this work for the intermediary steps of your algebra. OK, um, just what you initially set up to solve that. And I'm not going to go through the solving on that because I do in a separate video. You can look on um, the videos up ab above on this day, the lecture videos. It says how to solve algebraically for sample size. Now, if I have you do that, look at this problem, we want to estimate with a margin of error of 0.02, the true proportion of all senior medical students who plan to specialize in internal medicine with a confidence of 90% in our results. What sample size is necessary? So if I come over here to start listing my information, I know the margin of error is 0.02. Critical value for 90% confidence is 1.64. But they did not tell me a p hat. They did not tell me a, a, a level that I knew from past results. Okay? So the largest possible product that could occur when you square two amounts, two decimals, is the, the, when we would square 0.5 times 0.5. That would give the largest possible product, see, because there's that. For example, 0.4 times 0.6, that's 0.24, see? So it starts going down. This is a product of 0.25. This is a product of 0.24. 0.3 times 0.7, that's a product of 0.21. So those products start getting smaller as you get farther away from 0.5 times 0.5. So to be on the safe side, we put the largest possible product there can be in there. And that's 0.5 times 0.5. So the best it can be is if you use true P. But if you do not have that, then of course we use our P hat. Worst case scenario is those don't jive. Please don't cry. Please don't cry. Just use 0.5. Okay, and of course we have a song for that. So let me play that for you real quick. Here we go. The best it can be is if you use true P. You don't have that, you can just use P hat. Worst case scenario is those don't jive. Please 
you can use 0.5 to be on the safe side. Okay, so that's what we put in there. 0.5 filled in the margin of error equals that critical value, used 0.5 and solved that out and then rounded it up. Okay, so try this number three, see how you do on that. I'm going to let you take a moment, pause and try that number three and we'll see how you do. So I can see that this number three was even different still. It did not have a P hat, so we used 0.5. But it actually gave us a sample size, so I had an N to fill in. So if I use this information, the one thing that is missing is my critical value because ultimately I want to know what degree of confidence so to know that degree of confidence, see that degree of confidence is that level that what is in the middle. Confidence level is what's in the middle. So once I find those, the lower critical value and the upper critical value, I can norm CDF to find out how much area that is and that tells me what my confidence level was. So here I solved for my critical value 2.036 and if I did 2.036 now I've always said to do your Z scores to two places so um, if I had done that from negative 2.04 to positive 2.04 then that would have come out to be 0.9586 okay so some similar here 0.9586 and I think that, and I don't really know specifically, I'm, I'm pretty sure that if it was an AP multiple choice question, then they would give you something farther away so that there wasn't the obvious one that was closest to the 95%. Because I don't really know exactly the rule if I should round to 96 or keep it at 95. I think I should be on the safe side on these. And on the safe side of these is going in whereas the safe side for the sample size is getting bigger. But uh, anyway, so that's 95%. Um, I would not have something so close as to make you choose between 95% and 96%. Okay, so whichever one of those you had come up with, that's it. All right, now, here we have this problem. We have Presidential Pete. He's on the home stretch of the campaign, and he wants to know if the polls predict that he will win the election. So a recent poll of 1,020 randomly selected voters found 484 responded in favor of Pete. Construct a 95% confidence interval. Now we're going to do that here in just a minute. But how would raising this confidence level, what would that do to the interval? So just real quick, going from 95% to 98 would make that a wider interval. But what happens if Pete wants to take another poll, but he doesn't have enough money to poll as many people? So he only polls 500 voters. What's that going to do if we have to have a smaller sample size? That increases the standard deviation, 
which then makes the interval bigger so he can be less precise. Now, I think I'm going to do a separate video um, of all of the details here for this thing called a panic model. This panic model will tell us all the things that we need to include when we do an official write-up of our confidence interval. It is not just a matter of computing out the math and stating what that interval is. There's many other things you can see here that are involved with that. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna do a separate video on the panic model to make a complete video or to make a complete interval write-up.